is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, and by Grunt Style. Now, with all the news from NASCAR Touring, local and international series racing, here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. A new winner doubles up in the Arizona desert and is already an early favorite for this year's NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series National Championship. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast for Wednesday, May 9th, 2018. Kyle Rickey here in Killingly, Connecticut, joined by Hannah Newhouse in our Concord, North Carolina studios. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Wednesday afternoon. Lots of action this past weekend, Hannah, in both local and regional NASCAR racing, including north of the border in Canada, opening night at Sunset Speedway. But first, let's start with the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West a division that you're very familiar with as a, a former participant. You've covered the series a bunch this year for NASCAR home tracks. So how much do you know about our new winner, Cody Vanderwall, who won not one, but both races this past weekend at Tucson Speedway in Arizona, kind of talk, took a lot of us off guard. Yeah, it really did. I don't think he would have been one that a lot of people would have picked to win this past weekend at Tucson Speedway. And not anything against him, but you've got a lot of competitive drivers out there, especially these kids that are running at Bill McAnally Racing and Jefferson Pitts. And Cody Vanderwall showed up, and he just – he showed that he's going to be a contender this year. He's already moving up in the point standing, and he swept the weekend. I mean, what a great way for him. It's his sophomore season here in the k and Pro Series West. And uh, he did it in two different ways. They ran twin 100 races – and the first race, anyone that knows or been to Tucson, it's a really abrasive half mile, um, all, all about tire conservation. And the first race, he went and just took the lead, took off, and they had a late race caution, and he ended up taking the win on the white flag. I mean, in the next race, he did the complete opposite, hung back, didn't really do anything, waited, 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 and then made a late race charge. So two completely different strategies showing that he's got what it takes to possibly contend for some more wins in the k and Pro Series West this season. Vanderwall will join us here in a little bit on the show in race number one. You mentioned he held off Derek Thorne by a tenth of a second. One of the closest finishes that series has seen in a while. Ryan Partridge finished third. Derek Krause fourth and a good run for Vanessa Robinson getting up there in the top five. In race number two, he held off Partridge by just about a half a second. Thorne was third. Cole Rouse was fourth. And Trevor Huddleston rounded out the top five. Derek Thorne, the championship leader by three points over Partridge. Five more back to Krause, heading to the Orange Show Speedway here in a couple of weeks on May 19th. Seems wide open uh, as far as the championship is concerned, uh, Hannah. We talked about uh, Cody sweeping the weekend. We also talk a lot about the BMR cars, Bill McAnally Racing, but haven't uh, this season with Cole Rouse sitting fourth in the championship standing. So right now, I know it's early, but it seems like it's a wide open championship race. It really is, and I think one of the things we're going to see is consistency, consistency in these Sunrise Ford cars. I mean, um, they Bob Brancotti brought Ryan Partridge and Derek Thorne back to get another championship. That's his goal, and those two drivers have been nothing but consistent with top three, top five runs. We haven't seen a win yet come from that camp, but they're going to be there all season, and consistency is what wins championships in the NASCAR k and Pro Series West. So those two are going to be my early, early, early picks in the season to really contend for a championship but it is wide open. you got a lot of talent out there and a lot of people that are really close in the points right now. Again, May 19th, the next race at Orange Show Speedway for the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West. Also on today's show, two-time Stafford Motor Speedway winner this year already, and he's focused on trying to pick up his second NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series National Championship. Of course, talking about Keith Rocco. Rocco won in the SK Modified Division at Stafford Motor Speedway on opening weekend at the spring sizzler backed it up on opening friday night this past week also won at the icebreaker at thompson and i think when we talk about car count a lot hannah it's very healthy as far as the modifieds are concerned and you saw that at thompson a couple of weeks back uh with car count and with keith chasing car count in a modified gonna give him a pretty good shot at at his second national championship later this year yeah, it really is. We saw last year in the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series points chase. You saw it you know, with Lee Pulliam and Trevor Huddleston. They were going all over the place looking for whatever track had the most cars and the most you know, races and twin races. And it's really, really difficult, especially on the West Coast, to find those car counts because that's where the points come in. But with modified racing being so healthy right now, especially up in the Northeast, I think you're going to see Keith Rocco really give a good run for the money in the points chase this year, especially you know, he's got a couple wins under his belt already. 
Rocco's talked about visiting some racetracks that he usually doesn't run. He's usually contained at the three Connecticut, uh, Connecticut ovals. That may change this year. We will talk to Keith coming up after the break as he will be our first guest and recap his season so far. He's three for three thus far in 2018. And Keith Rocco will join us after the break here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Race fans, you may not wear a fire suit when you get behind the wheel of your car, but getting back on the road fast is still important. That's why there's AAA, the nation's leading roadside assistance provider. With more than 50,000 service vehicles nationwide, it's no wonder they get to you 15 minutes faster than other roadside service providers. Think of them as the pit crew that goes everywhere with you, 24-7, 365. Keep you and your car on track with AAA. Visit AAA.com slash race fan. 15-minute faster arrival time is an average based on 2013 to 2016 AAA U.S. market track national surveys. MRN original programs stream on MRN.com. Check out NASCAR drivers on Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Wing Meyer. Sprint car racing on Wing Nation with Steve Post and Aaron Everett. Meet NASCAR team crews on Crew Call with Sammy Joe and Rocco. NASCAR local and regional racing on NASCAR Coast to Coast with Kyle Ricky and Hannah Newhouse. NHRA talk on the straight line with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Your home for original motorsports talk. MRN.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. We are back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. In recent weeks, we've talked a lot about late model and super late model racing with the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown and, and the opening of racetracks that run those type of cars on a regular basis like Hickory, Kingsport, and the bullring at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Uh, one driver that uh, we have not been able to talk a whole lot about is Keith Rocco, and that's because uh, he, he's in a modified. So let's talk about modified racing here on today's show with Keith. And Keith joins us now on the guest line, a three-time winner this year in three starts. It's been a, a pretty successful year for Keith in 2018. Keith, welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Let's start uh, with the season so far. Uh, we just mentioned it's still early, but three for three in race wins with the Thompson Icebreaker, the Stafford Sizzler, and Stafford opening night. Uh, what's been the the big key to the early success so far this season? Uh, I think you could just say preparation over the winter. You know, we got a we got a really good team, and uh, things are, are put together very well over the winter, and all that seems to be making a big difference right now. You know, we got some great help. Uh, we got a good crew chief. We got. Uh, we get, it seems like we just have all the right pieces to the puzzle right now, and things are going real smooth. Now, there's been talk about you potentially chasing the uh, NASCAR Will and All American Series championship this year, and you've started your season off, you know, three for three on these wins. What's that confidence, or what's that do to your confidence when it comes to chasing a title like that? Uh, it's pretty good. In past years, it's 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 something you can't just say, all right, let's uh, let's race for the national championship this year because realistically the way i race i race to win races it's it's just a matter of whether you win enough races, you string enough wins together to begin to get a good start you know um uh, can't really change the way i go about the season can't change for racing for staff are my two tracks so uh whatever we could win for races between the two we'll see if it puts us in a contention at the end of the year we talk um, every year about how competitive the SK Modified field is at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Guys like Rowan Pennick and Matt Galco, Ronnie Williams, Chase Dowling, occasionally Ryan Priest uh, will show up on a Friday night. After a couple of weeks in the season, how would you kind of rate the field at Stafford on, on Friday night? Is it is it still, you know, we call it one of the healthiest and strongest fields of, of short track racing at this part of the country. Is it still ranked right up there toward the top? It definitely is. Uh probably the most competitive track around but you know uh, I think as of right now I don't think everybody else quite has their uh, their cars dialed in and I think they might be struggling a little bit I think 
we'll see a lot more competition, you know, here in the next few weeks. But as of right now, I think our car is probably one of the best cars in the field. Now, we talk a lot about how healthy modified racing is, especially up in the Northeast. Um, I come from late models and super late models, so I'm always focusing on those car counts. But in the Northeast, it definitely shows a lot of modifieds. What do you think one of the key factors is to having such a healthy field up there right now? I think it contributes more to the to the facility and, and the management as far as uh, anything else. You know, Stafford has probably the best facility there is and the cleanest facility, and, you know, everybody there is uh, – just so polite and and helpful and you know the way they treat their racers and advertise social media and it just goes on and on and you know also you have Thompson Speedway which they don't ha quite have that busy of a schedule it's more or less once a month but you know uh, their facility too is absolutely amazing with all they have done over the years and, and the road course and everything else so um, I think a lot has to do with you know how you're treated how you're paid uh, you know Stafford's um, payout right now is probably second to none you know, uh, in the last two weeks, when the first two races, they both payouts have been over two thousand dollars for a, a weekly lap race, which is huge for uh, for the Northeast and Connecticut. So I think that's a big factor as as that. But you know, also you have three tracks in Connecticut that race SK modified, so um, they're able to go to one of the three tracks or go to all three tracks if they really wanted to with the same car. So that does make it a lot easier for the racers to to pick and choose where they want to go and what night they want to race. Hannah mentioned car count. You contribute a lot to a lot of that car count in both the SK Modifieds and the SK Lights. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your race team this year, who's driving for you at, at Stafford Motor Speedway especially, and even at Thompson. Uh, you mentioned once a month uh, that track is in competition, but when you guys show up, it's not with just one car. It is with a, a fleet of cars and a lot of young drivers that, that you're kind of uh, you know uh, grooming for future success in modified racing. Yeah, it's almost like a development program I put together over the last couple of years, you know, a partnership program with other drivers and other teams, you know. Some guys don't have the resources, they don't have the technology, they don't have the time, the money, and, uh, you know, everything else to put a full team together and, and make a full assault on a season. So uh, what I've been doing is, is partnering up with drivers and, and teams and, and uh, giving them the opportunity to contend for a, for a championship in a full year and win races and everything. So, uh, you know, I have Michael Jarvis and um, – I have Michael Jarvis at Stafford and Doug Missouri Jr. at Stafford racing full time, and then at Thompson I have uh, Troy Talman and Jake Johnson. So uh, I have quite the uh, the team I have put together, and you know uh, it's been working out very well. And as as far as that, there's there's more. You know um, I do as much setup work as I can, and help uh, you know a lot of SK Light teams out, and and uh, you know setting their cars up and and. Uh, giving them as much help at the racetrack as I can setup wise and, and vice wise and you know just uh trying to really make a name for myself as far as uh putting a business together now we talk about the expansion of your team and you know developing these young drivers but you have potentially a young driver yourself your son KJ he's getting up there are we expecting to see him behind the wheel of anything here in the next year or so uh to be honest with you I don't think you will you know um I'd like to bring him up the way that I was brought up and, and have an understanding of how things work and how to work on race cars and how to build them before you can drive them. You know, I think that makes a big difference in, uh, in, in driving ability as far as knowing what you need in a race car. You know, um, you can't always rely on somebody else to, to make the calls for you and make the changes and, and, uh, decide what the car needs. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, at this day and age, if you don't have money, you're not going to go anywhere. So I might as well bring him up like I was brought up and, and, give him the ability to know what he needs in a race car and how to fix it and how to build it so uh you know we'll spend a few more years in the garage together and teaching him things and um we'll go from there i did see him in the seat of the nema midget you drove this past <laughs> weekend so i know there's at least a little bit of interest there uh, on kj's part um keith rocco joining us here on nascar coast to coast uh con hoping to contend for another national championship in the nascar wheel and all american series and also wanting to back up his track championship at the Stafford Motor Speedway from this past year and already well on his way with two wins. But uh, let's talk about the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour for a moment. It's been three years since your last start on the tour, 30 starts in total over seven part-time seasons. Does that level of the sport of modified racing uh, interest you still like maybe it once did? Um, 
to be honest with you, I don't really, uh, if the opportunity was there and somebody offered me a top-notch ride, I would love to take it and love to to try to do something with it. But, you know, as far as uh, losing sleep over not having a ride in the modified tour, it doesn't affect me. You know, uh, I have a family, I have two kids, and, you know, there's a little bit of traveling involved. So, you know, uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings not to be racing the, the tour. You know, I, I really do enjoy wait, racing weekly at Stafford and Thompson. So um, until something comes up, it's not going to phase me. Now, we talk a lot about a, a lot of the talent that comes out of the Modifieds, including the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, and you've got these young guns like uh, Chase Dowling and Matt Swanson and uh, Patrick Emerling who are really battling it out right now in that series. But who is someone that you would say you know, has potential to be one of the me next big names in Modifieds or one of the stars moving up through the ranks right now? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I would probably say Ronnie Williams. You know, He put on a really good show at, at the... Uh, the icebreaker and the kid's got a lot of talent and he's uh he's got a good head on his shoulders he's a respectable driver and uh you know i think he's uh definitely a driver that will see showcase the talent here on the tour in the next year or so absolutely uh we'll be watching for him uh not only in local racing but maybe to make that move into the nascar wheel and modified tour here in the coming uh, like you mentioned year or two keith rocco as always thank you for joining us here on nascar coast to coast congratulations on all of the early season success and we'll see you uh friday night at the stafford motor speedway sounds good thank you looking for five in a row at stafford he won the last two races of the 2017 season and has already won the first two races of this 2018 campaign at the stafford motor speedway coming up here on nascar coast to coast we talked earlier about uh, cody vanderwall and all of his success in the nascar k n pro series west this past weekend at the tucson speedway in arizona he will join us coming up after the break Kyle Petty here. My friends at Click and Close, the official mortgage provider of NASCAR, have stepped up this year to support Victory Junction through the fastest lap of the race program on NASCAR Radio. So join our team. Go to clickandclose.com slash NASCAR today to donate $43 or more and help us give the gift of camp to children with serious medical conditions. That's clickandclose.com slash NASCAR. And just look for the Victory Junction logo. Thanks to Click and Close and NASCAR Radio for their support this season. MRN's Throwback Thursday, the greatest races in NASCAR history. Richard Petty goes back in front. They both spin. They're in the wall. Petty is sliding. Pearson is still running. As they come to the stripe, the winner is car number 21. They spin. They go into the outside wall. Earnhardt hits the wall. Rudd hits the wall. And scooting through is Jeff Bodine. And he is going to win the Holly Farms 400 here this afternoon. Thursdays at 1 on MRN.com. On demand on iTunes and Google Play. Throwback Thursday on MRN.com. The Country 500 Music Festival is back at Daytona International Speedway How do you like me now? with Toby Keith, Chris Stapleton, Dirk Bentley, Sugarland, like Billy Currington, and so much more. Country 500 Memorial Day weekend, May 25th, 26th, and 27th. For tickets and information, visit country500.com. Sponsored in part by Budweiser. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network, the only NASCAR touring series in action this past weekend was the NASCAR k and Pro Series West at Tucson Speedway in Arizona for the Port of Tucson Twin 100s. 18 teams showed up, and it was Cody Vanderall who won both of the Twin 100s, and he joins us now on the guest line. Cody, congratulations. Welcome to the show. And has it sunk in yet that not only did you win your first K&N Series race, but also your second on the same night? Well, thank you, and thank you for having me on. Um, no, I don't think it's fully set in yet. Um, it's probably going to take me a little while to, for all that to set in. It was an incredible weekend. At what point of the weekend did you know, and I guess it was, you know, practice, qualify, race, not a whole lot of track time, all within a two-day period. At what point of the weekend did you know that you could be a serious contender for, for the checkered flags, both of them, the following night? Um, I, I, think, I, th I think the end of Friday night, even though we didn't show a whole lot of speed on the board, uh, I knew the car felt really good, and I knew that we could be a contender on the long runs. Um, 
I didn't know until Saturday morning how good it was also going to be on the short runs. But but I, th- I think I knew pretty early on that we were going to have a good car. I didn't know at all, though, until about halfway through that first race how good it really was. Now, Tucson's a lot about tire conservation. You know, it's really abrasive in that half mile. A lot of people tend to hang back, wait, and then make late race charges. But in the first race, you jumped out to the lead, took off in that late race caution, almost lost it for you, but you still managed to get by Derek Thorne. In the second one, though, you did hang back. What was the deciding factor between trying two different race strategies in those races, knowing that you'd won the first one? Uh, the first one, that kind of weird, honestly. I mean, I just found the outside lane to work there and decided I might as well go to the front now and try and try and set the pace. And I was trying not to push it, trying not to overheat my tires, and somehow was still pulling away and maybe pushed a little bit too hard, but still able to beat Derek there on the restart. I don't, I don't know how it would have went if we would have had some more laps, but. Um, that ended up working out and then the second race I didn't change my strategy too much the main thing I think was that everybody else changed their strategies and made their cars better um so Ryan just took off to the lead and I decided just to follow him and just try and conserve my tires again and have something for him at the end and ended up working out worked out uh, not once but twice uh, near photo finish there that first race with Derek Thorne last year your full it was your first full season in the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West two top five finishes ninth in the championship standings what was the biggest takeaway for you as a driver from last year that you can apply or have been applying this year uh, that has maybe contributed to some of this early season success well you know I I don't know if there's one major major takeaway from last year. I mean, there's a huge, huge learning curve last year for me. When I did get into the K&N car for the first time, I hadn't even been in a super late model at that point. Um, so it was this really steep learning curve for me, and we had just planned on doing the one race and ended up doing the whole season. And I had a lot of fun and learned a ton, and I guess, one of the main things I learned about these particular cars is just they're they're so heavy and still have a lot of horsepower so that they don't really handle that well and you got to really really be very very disciplined and keep the car underneath you now one of the big things in the K&N Pro Series obviously is consistency you showed now you've got two wins back to back in the Pro Series and quite a few more races for the rest of the year What's the confidence going into the remainder of the season knowing that your guys' small team has a shot at this championship? Um, the confidence coming into Tucson was fairly high for me. It's a track I know well, a track I really like, and we had a fast car in Bakersfield despite our blown motor. And um, But then the confidence going into race two was just, it was as high as I've ever, as high as I've ever had my confidence. It was just, finally getting that first win even though it's only been a season that I've been in this series but my confidence was at all-time high going into race two and now going into orange show it's it'll still be high because I mean orange show we had a fourth place last year didn't have a very fast car but orange show is all about taking care of your car um so I'm excited for that and then the race after that's Colorado National Speedway which is my real home track and I know I'll, I know we'll be very fast there let's talk about Colorado National for a moment you're 17 years old from LaSalle Colorado what uh, piqued your interest in motorsports obviously your dad Rudy Vanderwall uh, long associated with Colorado National uh, was it uh, was it him that got your spark in, in motorsports at Colorado National yeah uh he started racing when i was about six or seven and at at first i'd just go watch the races and started being pretty interested in it and then when i got old enough to figure out what was going on i'd help him in the shop and then then they opened the pits up to kids so i'd go into the pits and help him at the track and 
And then when I was 11 years old, he bought me a, a 1972 Monte Carlo to go play around on the dirt track with in Fort Morgan. So that's where that's where I got my start. And yeah, it started with helping my dad in the shop, basically. And we still do that every week, almost every night of the week, out in the shop working together. Now, Kyle talked about your dad and, you know, second generation um, behind the wheel, which you are. But talk about the team dynamics a little bit. Obviously, we have a lot of um, bigger teams, including Bill McAnally Racing, Jefferson Pitts, and out on the East Coast as well. But your team was deemed an underdog. Talk about the dynamics a little bit of uh, what you bring to the racetrack every weekend. Uh, so, the, so the cars themselves are owned by John Wood at Patriot Motorsports Group. Um, he supplies the, the cars and the motors and what, whatever he can to us. And then from there, we have, our, we have the cars at a shop in Tucson with my crew chief, Jason Dickinson, and then Warren Simpson employed full-time to work on them there. Um, and then... And that's all under the banner of my dad's team that he started 11 or 12 years ago, which is Flying Dutchman Racing. So it's kind of a it's kind of a um, conglomeration of Patriot Motorsports Group and Flying Dutchman Racing. And then all of our at track crew is friends and family volunteers from here in Colorado. And so yeah, we're we're on probably at least about half the budget of some of these other teams and right now we have one complete car we're working on putting another one together for orange show so we don't have to take our good car there don't want to risk tearing it up and then we have another car that's actually in north carolina right now being rebuilt so it's a lot a lot smaller team than than the mackinellis than the sunrise but my crew chief, Jason Dickinson, is very, very smart. He's been around this for forever. He knows what he's doing, and he's built us a really good car. A smaller team, but uh, racing up there with the bigger teams here these opening couple of weeks and taking not one but two checkered flags on Saturday night in Tucson. Cody, thank you for your time here this afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the show, and best of luck to you the rest of this 2018 campaign. Thank you, guys. Cody Vanderall joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Coming up, a review of some of uh, the winners from last weekend at short tracks across the country and a preview of the weekend ahead. We'll continue with this edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. Race fans, you may not wear a fire suit when you get behind the wheel of your car, but getting back on the road fast is still important. That's why there's AAA, the nation's leading roadside assistance provider. With more than 50,000 service vehicles nationwide, it's no wonder they get to you 15 minutes faster than other roadside service providers. Think of them as the pit crew that goes everywhere with you, 24-7, 365. Keep you and your car on track with AAA. Visit AAA.com slash racefan. 15-minute faster arrival time is an average based on 2013 to 2016 AAA U.S. market track national surveys. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. Take down the number now for the Federal Tax Management Hotline, 800-242-1706, 800-242-1706. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Putting a bow on this week's edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network, Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. And Hannah, uh, we talked a lot about the NASCAR K&N Series, but there was a lot of other NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series action across the country. Yes, there was. Tim Brown captured the win in the Modifieds at the famous Bowman Gray. Riverhead Raceway was also underway with Kyle Soper, John Fortin Sr., and Biondolo also in rounding up the top three in the Modifieds there. Meridian Speedway had their Modifieds racing as well, where Brian Worf captured the win in the first main and Chris Fenton captured it in the second. And Myrtle Beach Speedway had their late model action underway, with Matt Cox taking the win over Sam Yarborough and Jeremy McDowell rounding out the top three.
At Kingsport Speedway, Zeke Shell won a crash-shortened late model feature after Trey Bain hit the Turn 1 gate. Trey is the younger brother to Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series star Trevor. He was bruised, but okay. Uh, Zeke Shell, the fourth different winner in as many weeks at Kingsport. Sunset Speedway, Nick Getz won the late model feature on opening night. Dan Doucette won in Super Stocks. And it was Keith Carzillo winning the Sportsman Modified race over Kimi Rivette in the uh, Sportsman Modified race at Mnodnock Speedway in New Hampshire over the weekend. Devin Morgan won a limited late model competition at Greenville Pickin Speedway. A lot of short track racing this past weekend, a lot more coming up this weekend, including Hannah, the NASCAR k and Pro Series East, back in action for their night of Twin 100s. They're heading into South Boston this weekend, and the k and Pro Series East is going to be so interesting this year. We saw Tyler Ancrum take the points lead last time at Langley Speedway, where uh, Tyler Dipple captured his first win after announcing his partnership with David Gill and Crosley Racing. So... We're going to see a lot of interesting people. You're also going to throw the locals like Colin Garrett, who made his debut at Langley here at South Boston Speedway. So there's going to be a lot of racing action in these twin 100s. Um, I'll be interested to see, you know, what strategies a lot of these teams use, whether they're going to hold back in the first 100 and race hard in the second, or if uh, we're going to see some serious racing action all weekend long. Just two points separate Ankrum from Dipple going into this weekend's action at South Boston Speedway. Should be fun. Hannah, enjoy uh, the weekend at South Boston. Yes, I will. Looking forward to some uh, stock car action. Uh, love the modifieds, but always love going back to my K&N cars. All right, that'll do it for today's show. I want to thank Keith Rocco and Cody Vanderwall for joining us. For Craig Moore and Jennifer Crocking, she's Hannah Newhouse. I'm Kyle Ricky. See you here next this week. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on demand at MRN.com, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.